Hey, how's everybody doing today? I want to ask you a quick question. When you think of the word baby, or when you think of a baby, what is one of the things that comes to mind? I know babies are generally cute, they're lovable, you want to cuddle, you want to hug them. But when you think of a baby in Christ, what's the first thing you think of? in relation to being a Christian. Ponder that and let's get into the teaching. Today I'm going to be teaching from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. In that particular scripture, Paul is addressing the Corinthian church and he is talking uh, to them about spiritual things or he wants to talk to them about spiritual things, but he's letting them know that he really can't address the spiritual things the way he'd like to because there's too many babes. There's too many babes. The mentality or the spirituality, I should say, that needs to be there in order for him to reach them is not there. So when we're talking about babes in Christ, we're talking about an immaturity. There's something lacking. There's an unknowing, not a knowing, but an unknowing. There's an inability to do certain things or to understand certain things. There's an inability to live a certain type of way. There's a sanctification or there's a conviction that's missing if you are a babe in Christ. And so I I believe the Lord is leading me to do this teaching because there's a lot of people in the body of Christ who really need to grow up. Um, they become too content with life as usual, Christendom as usual, you know? We're living in some really perilous times and you know, there's this phrase that only the strong survive. And if there was ever a time when that's true, it's now. But when we say only the strong survive in the body of Christ, we're not talking about human strength. We're talking about those who know the Lord, who live for the Lord, and who are open to be led by him. It is so important for Christians, for children of God, believers, to grow up. If you, if your mentality is towards staying in a place of, of just seeing God as this big teddy bear in the sky, the man upstairs, some people refer to him that way. I mean, if you are unable to see God on a greater scale in your life, in this life, using you to do things, you're going to be in trouble. And when it comes down to being a Christian, when we, when we talk about Christians, you know, growing up, it has nothing to do with how long you've been saved. First, I, I just want to make sure that you understand that. You could have been saved for 20 years. That does not mean you're a mature Christian. Whereas somebody else could have been saved for maybe th three years. They may be more mature than the person who's been saved for 20. And let me tell you why. Being mature in Christ has to do with your understanding of who he is, who you are in him, and your level of sanctification and conviction as his child. So don't let anybody tell you and don't you be convinced that being a babe in Christ has only to do with how long you've been saved. I used to be ignorant that way. I used to think that. I used to think that being a mature Christian was tied to how long you've been saved. And so I had to come to a place where I was open to being taught the right way. And the right way is it has nothing to do with how long you've been saved. It has everything to do with your heart of obedience towards God, to live for him, to, to grow in understanding of who he is, what he expects from you, and your ability to carry that out. Because you see, you're there, you have people, they've been, they've been saved for 20 years. 
And all those people do is just go to church every Sunday, pick up a Bible and read it. They may go to Sunday school. I mean, sorry, they may go to Bible study sometimes. They may be even active in their church to some degree. But when it comes down to their level of sanctification and conviction and relationship with the Father and their openness to grow in the things of God, they're missing something in that area. So being mature in Christ has nothing to do with how long you've been saved. You might have been saved for five years and you know someone, whether it be a friend or a family member or anybody else, and they've been saved longer than you. And they may think that because they've been saved longer than you, that they're more mature than you are. But if you are growing in the knowledge of who God is, if you're growing in sanctification and conviction, and you have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness in the things of God, and God is telling you who you are, and he's drawing you out from that old way of thinking and guiding you into this new place of living and thinking, then you might have been saved for five years, they might have been saved for 20, but you're more mature. What you're willing to say no to also lends to how mature you are in Christ. Because in in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the reason why Paul was talking to the Corinthians and, and referring to them as babes was because there was a lot of carnality going on. If you know anything about Corinthian, the Corinthian church, there's a lot of carnality going on in that particular church. There was a lot of people who were fence riders. Just like today, it's the same thing in the church. There's a lot of people who are riding the fence. They're trying to have one foot in the world, have one foot in the church. And that just doesn't work. you either in or you're out. There's no gray area with God. And so, as it was in that particular time, it is today the same way. And you're either a babe or you're mature. And once again, it is in the spirit realm as it is in the spiritual realm as it is in the natural. A baby needs to be coddled a lot. Babies need to be spoon fed, right? They're not very independent. They always need you to do something for them. And babies are quite impatient. And so it is the same way with the child of God who has not come to a certain place of maturity. If you pray on Monday and you need God to answer on Tuesday morning by 5 a.m., you may not be as mature as you think you are. And I let me just let me just expound on that. Cuz some people are probably going to say now wait a minute now. Anybody can be going through something and need to see God move. And I'm not talking about that. I understand that. I'm not I'm not talking about emergencies. You know, there's things that can come up there pressing that no matter how far you no matter how mature you are, you may need to see God move quickly. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that for anything that they pray about, every time they pray, they want to see it answered just like that. And if God doesn't answer just like that, something's wrong. And and I just wanna I wanna say this for those of you who are no longer babes who are watching this do you remember when you first got saved or when you were in that um, that stage of being a babe and every time you prayed God would just answer you just like that that's another way that you know you're a babe too praise God for that revelation thank you Holy Spirit when, when you pray and every time you pray, notice what I said, every time you pray, the answer comes just like that. That's God letting you know that you are a babe. Because as you begin to mature, that's going to go out the window. There are going to be many times that you're going to pray and your prayers are not going to be answered just like that. You're going to have to learn how to trust him and you're going to have to learn how to wait. Does that mean as people mature 
that no matter what's happening in their life, they can never expect God to move quickly? No. I just said that a few few minutes ago. No matter how mature the person, no matter how low, high... <laughs> No matter how high the level of conviction, anything could happen in your life. An emergency could happen in your life where you need to see God move quickly. But that's not all of the time. The babe in Christ prays and always expects to see God move quickly. And generally, God will move quickly because you are a babe. He has to do it. He has to move quickly for the babe. It's sort of like if you have children, you know that if you have a two-year-old and you have a, a three-month-old, that three-month-old is like you better get that. You better get them that bottle quickly, right? Whereas the two-year-old, if it's time for them to eat, they might be a little fussy, but nothing like the two or three-month-old baby. The, 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 the less mature we are, the more needed we are. That's just how it is in the natural. Babies need a lot of attention. And in the spirit realm, it's the same way. And if you don't get it, you'll fall off. Or you just may not come back. I, I mean, what I'm saying is, is that you, you'll be in trouble. Let's just put it like that. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it. So God knows how to deal with the babe. Just like God knows how to deal with a mature person. So as you begin to grow in Christ, and you begin to come up in Christ, he deals with you differently. There's an expectation that God will put on the mature Christian that he will not put on a babe. And I think for some people that's a little scary. Because remember what I just said. If you're a babe, those prayers get answered just like that. But when you start to mature, not so much. You have to learn how to wait. Just like the two-year-old who's no longer being, or the three-year-old is no longer being spoon-fed by a mom or dad or granny. They got to wait. Wait till I prepare your food so I can put you at the table and you can feed yourself. The little babies like, wah, wah. <laughs> The little baby say, hey, get me that bottle and you get it to me now. If the baby's on the bottle, the bottle baby may be breastfed, right? Because we're talking about a two-month-old, three-month-old. Very needy. But you can't stay as a child of God in the babe stage. You must grow up. Because if God is going to use you, he cannot do it with you being a babe. Because he can't trust you. Like I said before, the prayers of the babe, they are, they are answered so very quickly. They have to be. Because as we grow in God, he trains us to trust him. He trains us to, you know, come into the knowledge of who he is. And a babe, a babe can't be trusted. So if you're in that stage and you know it, where your knowledge of God is not increasing or you haven't gotten to a certain place yet. You know, I don't want you to be discouraged. I want you to be encouraged, but I want you to be I want you to begin to seek the Lord more about the calling that's on your life. Begin to seek the Lord more about knowing who he is because all these things are tied to um, you know, growing up. Be more concerned about how you are fasting and praying. All those things are tied to growing up. Babes, they generally do not have, you know, extensive prayer lives. Sometimes babes don't study a lot. This is a lot of things that babes generally don't know. And that's what Paul was saying to the Corinthian church. He's like, I want to share some of these things with you. Go read it for yourself. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. He's like, I want to share some things with you, but I... You, you're not there yet. You're not in a place where I can. Spiritually, those people were inept that he was talking to. He wanted to share, but he couldn't. And that's another thing. Um, there are some things that God can't share with us until we begin to grow and mature more. And I'm not saying that, you know, 
the when it comes to maturing as a Christian, that it's like it's all on you and it has nothing to do with God because that would be wrong for me to say. Um, because sanctification is something that God has to help us with, obviously that's on God too. But I want to say this to you and I want you to receive this with an open heart. You have to be positioned in order for God to begin to do the work on you that will help you to go to the next level so that you can begin to mature. You have to be open to it. Some people are not open to that. That's why you have people have been saved for 20 years and they, they're, they're still babes. And so I admonish you today, don't be a babe for 20 years. God willing you live that long. Don't be a babe for 15 years. Don't be satisfied with that, you know? And don't look at other people's lives and say, well, I see how, you know, they, they've matured, but they also have to go through a lot and they have to do this after that. People that aren't saved go through a lot. Trials and tribulations are a part of life, unfortunately, whether you are saved or not. And yes, as you grow, some of the trials and tribulations as you go from glory to glory, they're going to be a little bit more tougher. But guess what? You're not going through it by yourself. It is God with you. It is God within you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So I admonish you today to seek the Lord. Seek, 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 his, seek his face. Not so much his hand. Seek his face. Desire to grow up in the things of God so that you can be positioned to be sanctified by him. Be so convicted in how you live that you just don't live for everything. That as the Corinthian church had one foot in the world and one foot in the church, don't be like that. Be, have, be a person of great conviction. What it means to be of great conviction is that you don't just fall for anything. You're, you're prudent. You're wise. You're concerned about how you do things. You're, you're concerned about how you represent the kingdom of God. You're a person of great accountability. Do you know that in this day and age, as a child of God, if you have... Uh, the mindset of being very accountable. Do you know that you're you're not in a group of a lot of people? There's a small circle of people today who have great conviction in the body of Christ, who hold themselves accountable for what they do. Make sure there's a small group of people that do that. Make sure that you're in that group. Because if you're in that group, that means that God can use you that means God can begin to reveal to you what he's put in you and how he wants you to use it. And, and once again, if God is going to use you, he's not going to use you as a babe. He can't. You will have to begin to mature. And you have to be open for that. You have to be positioned for that. So I admonish you today, listeners, brothers, sisters in Christ, don't be satisfied with staying at one level as a Christian. As I heard Apostle Rennie McLean say some years ago, keep your eyes on the anointed ones of God. They should always be growing. If you are an anointed person and you know it, you should be growing. You should be growing in your ministry. You should be growing in the things of God. Please keep that in mind. Now, I, I hope and pray that there's been something that I've said today that has touched your heart. I hope there's been an impartation today in this teaching that will help you to begin to seek the Lord about your relationship with him and about not staying a babe if you fit into the babe category. I'm not, I'm not uh, putting a hammer on top of your head, you know, and condemning you for that. Everybody starts off at a babe, as a babe. What I'm saying to you today, brother, what I'm saying to you today, sister, is just don't desire to stay there. Don't be okay with staying there. Be concerned about your growth in the things of God. 
as you grow and mature, as wisdom grows in you and relationship with the Father, understanding of the Father and understanding of why you're here, your life should be changed. And you should be positioned to be used by God as a mature Christian. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And be blessed.